Right, and we are live. I'm going to give the proprietary couple of seconds here for the buffering. I'm going to check over here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Geo Snippets Reboot Podcast. We are going to have one granddaddy of a show, let me tell you. Uh, I'm going to check right now, make sure we're streaming. And uh, I am Andy Headhart Hat Smith. Uh, with me is the number one and top Canadian in the entire universe, Mr. Dave Bear. Hey, everybody. And of course, we have the geocaching vlogger, Joshua hey Johnson, with us. <laughs> awesome. All right, let me check to make sure that we're streaming here just to see. And we are. All right, we are live. So if we make a mistake, everything gets recorded. Yay! <laughs> hey, 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 welcome to the Geo Snippets Reboot Podcast. And right now we are doing the pre-show. And I'll tell you what, I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the people out there uh, that have been sending in comments and also the new people coming in to see the show. We are getting a lot of people coming over from uh, Podcast or Podcast because we have mentioned this week. And, uh, you know, word of mouth is starting to spread big time. And we are so very glad that you are coming about. So let me explain a little bit what happens, especially if you came here early. If you go to www.geosnippets.com, uh, right now we have the live feed going uh, through YouTube so everybody can actually physically see us as we are going. And we also have our worldwide chat room. We literally have geocachers from around the world uh, that uh, stay up late, get up early, uh, or even in other days. There are people in New Zealand and Australia right now. It is actually Friday morning and they're watching us live. It's so cool to have them. Uh, so they're watching the pre-show. Uh, and what we end up doing is we uh, chit-chat and talk about things and do sound checks, make sure everything's running and ready to go for the show when we actually start at about 8.30. So right now it's about uh, 8.16. And uh, if you're watching the video, so in other words, we've already broadcast, we're already asleep, and uh, you're looking at this on YouTube, YouTube, if you go and you want to bypass the pre-show, go to right about where you see this guy right here. That's the logo for the show. That's when we actually start at 8.30. So if you want to skip ahead and miss out all the back goodies that Dave and, and Josh and will be talking about, go ahead. I dare you. Go ahead. Move ahead. See what happens. But if you want to stick around and listen to us during the pre-show, you're more than welcome. And do us a favor. Be sure to go out and tell your friends, tell your family, tell fellow geocachers, tell your dog. We love animals. Hey, we're, we're friendly. Go out and tell them. Come over to www.geosnippets.com right now and see us live because I'm going to tell you a little secret. We got a second prize tonight from the Geocache Stash. So make sure you come on by because for the people that uh, watch the live show, they get a chance right here, right now. Well, not now, but when we're doing the show, uh, you get a chance to get a prize. And it's some good ones tonight. So uh, and not that they're not all good. They're good. You're going to love it. Tell everybody, go out on your tweeters, your tweets, your your G pluses, your all of them, and just tell them to come out to www.geosnippets.com and uh, come join the fun because that's what makes this community so great. It's you, and thank you so much for joining us. So, hey, guys, uh, we've got uh, Dave DeBear, and we've got uh, Joshua Johnson, and uh, how are you guys doing? Well, I I'm am doing, doing fantastic. I think I just talked my wife into fetching me a beer. So, um. Oh, yeah. Well, Dave's Canadian. So uh, <laughs> technically during uh, international law, I believe they are able to talk during a podcast. Uh, so that always makes it good. And, and quite frankly, I much feel better when Dave has a beer because he's more relaxed. <laughs> and it's not as, you know, I, don't, I get more scary when he's drinking milkshakes. Because let's face it, folks, when you're talking all the time and doing dairy, something bad's going to happen. There we go. Yeah. Hey, Deb, how you doing, sweetie? Thanks, Rudy. Can you hit the lights on the way up, please? Thank you. Yes, as you can tell, we're very informal in the pre-show. It's uh, it's it's a good thing. And uh, well, if we're informal here, I'll, I'll introduce you to my daughter, the Reister Bunny. She's listening. Oh yeah, here. yeah. How's she, she doing? There she is. Hey, sweetie, welcome. Hi. How you doing? Good. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, make sure you stick by because uh, we'll probably talk about you too when uh, when we talk with your dad. Okay, that sounds That's fun. That's good. We'll have you on the show too. All right, thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, she's and a she's out. <laughs> <laughs> Camo, bye. 
<laughs> so yeah, uh, so you, Josh, you've been, you must have been. How, how are you walking? I mean, with all the <laughs> trips that you have done over the past couple of weeks, holy cow! Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm riding high. I'm flying high right now off of uh, geocaching mega heaven. I think. Um, two how weeks many ago, did you end up going to? Well, two weeks ago, I was in West Bend, Wisconsin, at the thousand dollar cash bash. Right. Uh, so I was there, and then of course the block party this this weekend. So I had two weekends in a row of geocaching fun. So oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm riding high. Um, and we'll talk about in the show, but the geocaching film festival ended up being a really great thing for for us, and it's been it's been an awesome couple okay, of weeks. Sneak peek. How'd you guys do? We won. <gasps> Way to go! Yeah. Awesome. We won, yeah, we won two awards. Um, awesome. We won the uh, the most creative experimental video, and then uh, we won the audience award, which was voted on by the people at the block party. Oh, that is um, amazing. Yeah, awesome. so that's really exciting. That the People's Choice amazing. Awards are always the best ones because they're the ones that yeah. actually come from the fans. That's oh, yeah. right. That's cool. That's right. So it was good to be affirmed by the geocaching community in that respect. And, and there were some, let me tell you, there were some really professional, awesome videos, so we feel pretty honored by it. That's amazing. Well, congratulations, man. Yeah. You deserve it. Thank you. Is, is the winning video going to be shown um, it's, somewhere? Yep, it's uploaded. It's it's going to go live either tonight or uh, early tomorrow morning. On your channel or like from Groundspeak? It'll be on my channel. Yep. Cool. Look forward to it. That's yep. awesome. Hey, folks, for, uh, for the people uh, coming into the live stream, and we're starting to build up big time, and also into our chat room. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is Andy Headhart Hat Smith here with the Geosnippets Reboot Podcast, and we have a special guest tonight. We have the geocaching vlogger, Joshua Johnson, and uh, he is going to be on with us tonight. We're, we're doing pre-show stuff, and for the people that know, uh, we just sit near Gavin. You know how that goes, and you get a lot of really cool back information about things that uh, we don't normally talk during the show uh, so you get to learn more about us and uh, we also are allowed to, to, to do our different pre-checks and make things sing, and make sure everything's going uh, Dave uh, why don't you let me run some music at you and let me know too loud not loud enough uh, that kind of thing hit me with the best shot all right Too high, too low. How are we doing? It was a smidge low, but within the range. All right, I'm gonna I'll move it up just a smidge. All right, awesome. Uh, Josh, why don't you can give me a count to ten there, so we can make sure that you're uh, coming in okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. All right, you paw, you pass. Do me a favor, if you can turn yours up just a little bit. And the reason why I say that is um, we're going to be pulling from the YouTube stream, and actually a little bit louder for you is better because it comes across clearer on the on the stream itself. All right. So that'll work out really yep. good. Dave, how about yourself? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Always wants that little bit more. That's just how he is. That's why I'm in show business, folks. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. That's how it works. So, uh, Josh, you uh, you keeping up on the uh, on the streak so far? I am. Today actually was uh, broke my streak record. I awesome. had 20, 21 before before that, and actually th th that twenty one was the, my first twenty one days of geocaching. <laughs> <laughs> so, so five years later. Um, Broke that streak, which isn't which isn't much considering that there's people out there with like two years of streak going. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't even <laughs> want to compare myself with other ones, but it was funny because I I was listening to Sunny and Sandy uh, earlier the week, and I think they had ten before they broke with this one. Uh, I had seventeen, I think. Okay. When I broke. So yeah, I think this is going to bring a lot of people up into the. Oh, you only have twelve, really. <laughs> Right. So, yeah, this is this is a good thing. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm not doing the streak just because there's not enough caches around me to make it possible. But my streak is 22, so I'm kind of upset about the date right now. There, you, <laughs> there you go. Wow. Yeah, that's how it goes. But uh, it's all part of the fun. I'll tell you what, I I enjoy it. This has been something, but it is starting to get get to be for me because I can't get my geocaches around here. I'm 10 miles around my house. There's nothing. 
And uh, so I've been doing uh, from around work, and even there, not uh, it's starting to get to that. Uh, okay, I got an hour lunch, twenty minutes there, twenty minutes back, twenty minutes to get the geocache, and yeah, my boss just rolls his eyes a lot. What can I say? <laughs> For me, it hasn't been the stress of finding the caches. It's been the stress of filming them and putting them up on YouTube. Yes. That's, that's been, that's more time consuming for me than finding yes. the caches. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, during yeah. the show too, but, because uh, I'm, I'm going through the same thing. Uh, that's like for tonight, and, and we've talked about post-production on the show before to the people in, in the pre-show. Uh, we, I, I'll sit there, we'll be done with the show uh, you know, quarter to ten, give or take. Uh, then I start post production for uh, for the podcast. Uh, the video cast goes out automatically, which thank goodness that happens because it <laughs> makes it so much easier. Uh, but then once I'm done with that, then I've got to do the vlog for today, and it's like eh, I won't be going to bed till about two. <laughs> So that's, all, that's, all in the name of uh, entertainment and geocaching fun. Yes, and you know it's um it's well you know just as just as much as we do uh, the the amount of people that just absolutely live and and want to see what's next and it it doesn't matter if it's a park and grab it doesn't matter if it's something spectacular they just enjoy living through our lives or whoever yeah. that's on YouTube to to see how geocaching is in other parts of the world. Yep, that's true. That's it's true. great. I love it. All right, folks, we got uh, 825. It's about five more minutes of the pre-show, and we'll be starting uh, the Geo Snippets Reboot Podcast. Thank you so much for stopping on by. we got a ton of people watching us on the YouTube live stream and starting to really stack up nicely in the uh, chat room. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you so much for visiting us each and every week. We really, really appreciate it because uh, we, otherwise we'd just be talking amongst ourselves, and that's not as much fun as talking with you guys. So thank you for being with us. Uh, we're going to be starting the show in about uh, five minutes or so. Uh, make sure you sit back, relax, get your favorite snack, your favorite libation. Don't ask Dave. He's got his. <clears throat> It's imported, too, from it's Canada. Imported. <laughs> See, you know, I, I realized that trip you took to Nova Scotia was just a truck drive to get all the stuff over the border and back. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I declared it all the border. Don't worry. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't even want to know. I don't want to know. Mm-mm-mm. All righty. Uh, any last uh, any last thoughts, gentlemen, before we uh, get the show starting here in about three minutes? I have many thoughts, not a lot of them related. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one or two. <laughs> have you guys ever been to the block party? No, no, and I'm very jealous that you got to go. Yes. It's really we've been asked uh, several times uh, from the uh, from the lackeys to to come on by, and it's right. it's always just been you know we're on the east coast and getting to the west coast isn't quite so easy, and right. we're gonna get there eventually. I really really want to go next year. So. Yeah, Me too. It, it, just, it seems to be really growing. I think they had like three thousand in attendance this year. Really, it's wow. crazy. I 3, have 000. been to HQ, but not when they've been you know in Party right. Central. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Spotlight yeah. BK said, oh my, I guess I'm a groupie. Yes, but you're an intellectual and good-looking groupie, so that's a good thing. Thank you, uh, Spotlight BK. So I guess, Andy, we have about a, a year to convince the wives that we should go to the block party? We better start now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honey. You know how I convinced my wife? How? It was our 15th wedding anniversary, so I, we coupled it in with that. Oh, so okay, along. so you brought her along. I did. Okay, that's good. Well, we're going to probably have to end up bringing You know, that sounds so bad. Well, we got to bring her <laughs> Our wives, actually, you know, uh, uh, Amy, I know for sure, absolutely loves, uh, she loves doing geocaching. She's hooked. So uh, having a little trip to, to Seattle, I think, would be uh, pretty exciting anyways. Yeah, my wife would love to go. It's the kids that make life a little bit harder. Yeah. So. yeah. We'll see. Yeah. That I got a year to plan and scheme, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a bunch of people in the chat room. We got uh, Mr. Cash seventy three out there, Mutt seven four sixty nine, Salty CA Spotlight B and K, Urban Dude twenty three. We got a ton of people piling in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast. Uh, it is eight twenty eight. We're going to be starting in about two minutes. Make sure you get your libation and your favorite snack ready. We have got a show for you tonight, and we got a second prize tonight. Don't tell anybody. Shh, it's a secret. 
So we're going to be starting in about two minutes, folks. Get yourself all ready. You're going to have one granddaddy of a show. This is going to be fantastic. All right, Dave, I still have that feeling. I forgot something, but everything looks... Did you hit record? No, thank you, sir. There we go. I hit record. <laughs> That's good. I am also recording now, just for... We do this each and every week, and, and as you saw in the show notes, Josh, we have big, bold lettering, did you hit record? We forget once in a while, <clears throat> meaning me. So that always makes it really interesting. So you have to go back and, and say everything you just said? No, actually no. I end up pulling it from the YouTube stream. Oh, nice. Oh, and, nice. And, and that little snippet. So if every once in a while the show sounds rough, that's why. So that's, uh, that's how we do it. All right. We've got uh, 8.30 here, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, get yourself sit back, relax, enjoy the show. And... Uh, I'm going to get everything set up here, and uh, we're going to get this party started. All right, folks, strap in. Here we go. The Geo Snippets Reboot Podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Geo Snippets Reboot Podcast. I'm Andy Head Hard, Head Hard Hat Smith. Once I learn how to speak, and you are watching the Geo Snippets Reboot Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. It is okay. There we go. Sorry, had my stuff move on me already. August twenty second, two twenty thirteen. We are recording live from the Geo Snippets Reboot Podcast Studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I'll tell you what, folks, we have one fantastic show tonight. We have for you, and I am so excited to have. Uh, first off, let me get our, our one and only famous Canadian, Mr. Dave DeBear, to say hi before we introduce our special guest. Dave, talk to the nice people. Hello, nice people. How are you guys doing this evening? Fantastic. Yes, we have with us, and like I said, I am so excited. We have one, the only, the geocaching vlogger, Mr. Joshua Johnson with us. Joshua, say hi to the nice people. Hello, nice people. It's good to be here on the YouTubes and the podcasts and everything else we're on right now. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I'll tell you what, Joshua, we are so glad to have you here. Uh, what we normally do is we're going to talk a little bit here, and you are free to talk and, and say your interjections all you like, uh, but we're going to cut right into the show, and then we will get to, right to you. But let's start off. Again, it's August 22nd, 2013. Uh, next hour or so, co-host Dave DeBear and I are going to bring you some interesting information and tidbits about the game, the sport, yes, the obsession, known as geocaching. And I'll tell you what, let's start right off the bat with this week. And I'll tell you what, if you are into geocaching, you have got to be about three quarters into your 31 days of geocaching. And if you haven't, you're missing out on some really cool digital souvenirs that uh, geocaching.com is providing. And again, if you're watching uh, YouTube each and every day, uh, I'm putting out for the 31 days of geocaching uh, my little bit of a uh, vlog with uh, wife Amy and I and uh, we're putting out our experiences with that and yes I want to thank each and every one of you for putting in your suggestions because we just for fun wanted to give a grand title for wife Amy for geocaching and uh, she wanted to, uh, you know I'm the head hard hat uh, she wanted to be the head hard hattress uh, 
And the second we said that, the people went nuts. All around the world, we've got it from the UK, from New Zealand, from all over, uh, saying, what a cool name. So, yes, from now on, wife Amy will be the head hard hattress, and she loves that. Thank you so much for your very cool comments. They've been very kind and very encouraging for Amy to get into geocaching. And I'll tell you what, it is so cool to have somebody uh, like a wife or a spouse going geocaching as a pair. It's a, it's a totally different way of geocaching. And, you know, as much as I like going geocaching with other people, it's, it's cool for me because she's so new to geocaching. So it's like reliving everything all over again, and it is so great. So, yes, we are on uh, day 22 of the 31 days of geocaching and just, just having a ball. I mean, that's, that's all it is to it. Uh, Dave, how about yourself? What have you been up to? Um, well, uh, this last week I haven't done a whole lot of geocaching. I normally geocache on the weekends, but this weekend my wife went camping with her family, and we are a one-car family, so I was kind of left home by myself without uh, um, a car or any caches within biking distance. Um, but I did manage to go to the, uh, the uh, International Caching Day event, so I got my spinally for that day. Um, one cool thing that has happened, though, is uh, last week... Um, I went uh, on this uh, off-site from work, and we went to the uh, National Whitewater Center near Charlotte, and I went kayak caching um, for the first awesome. time. And uh, several of my coworkers uh, went kayaking with me, and one of them is now hooked on uh, geocaching. She's found four since then so far. Um, so um, one more convert for the, uh, for the club, so it's pretty cool. We've added more to the fold. <laughs> Indeed. I have someone else at work to talk about geocaching. She said it was rolling their eyes, so it's awesome. That's awesome. Josh, anything for you for uh, the past week? Because uh, you've been oh. all over the place. Oh, boy. It has been an awesome week. Um, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, but I was at the block party, the geocaching block party in Seattle. Just got back from that on uh, Tuesday. Spent some time in Seattle. So, of course, um, a beautiful place, beautiful weather in Seattle, beautiful place to do geocaching. And we went to the, the famous gum wall and I got to do the ape cache again and, and um, participated in the International Geocaching Film Festival. So this has been, I have, needless to say, I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> awesome. And we will be getting right to that toot sweet, I'll tell you that. But that's fantastic. That really is. So you're saying to yourself, this is really amazing. We love seeing Dave. We love seeing Andy. We even love seeing Josh on this show. This is a cool thing. How do we get in on this? Well, it's really simple. For you to watch and get in touch with us, all you have to do is watch the live feed or join us in the chat room by going to www.geosnippets.com on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also have all our social links. When you go to geosnippets.com, underneath our glowing pictures of Dave and myself, we have all our social links that you can get in touch with our, you know, Twitter and Facebook and Google+. Please, please, please make sure you get us in your circles for Google+, because at each and every week we talk about different things about geocaching. Uh, we have communities that we talk through. We have our own uh, circles that we discuss things with. And a lot of that stuff ends up coming up on the show, and a lot of your viewpoints go that way as well. So please make sure you get Dave and I uh, in your circles as well and uh, also YouTube please 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 and you know it's kind of ironic Josh every time I refer to all this stuff with you too it goes for Josh just as much as it goes for us please make sure you subscribe to our channels uh, and the main thing with that is once we do a broadcast once we put out a new uh, video like say for each day of the 31 days of geocaching a new vlog goes out uh, if you are subscribed to our channel it goes right into your inbox and you instantly get that information once it's produced and ready for you so please 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 make sure you get subscribed to our YouTube channel Channels, uh, because that's one of the best ways of getting in touch with all of us. Uh, finally, we have our voicemail line where you can call in your questions, your comments, your suggestions by calling 919-341-9519, or you don't even have to worry about those nasty phone charges, especially for all our friends abroad overseas. Uh, all you have to do is on the right side, hey, I got it right this time, of our website. Uh, when you're on geosnippets.com, there's the send voicemail tab. All you have to do is have a computer that has a microphone or your tablet or your phone, uh, click on send voicemail and you get up to three minutes to send us a voicemail about anything you want to talk about, geocaching, stuff that you want on the show, stuff that you discussed about on the show that you want to get uh, uh, more viewpoint across. Let us know. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. Please be sure to give that a try because that's one of the great things that we love to do is get viewer feedback. Speaking of viewer feedback, Dave, what do we got this week? Yep, um, We have feedback uh, which came in via IRC 
BBC, um, which is not one of our normal regular channels, but um, it happened to be from a fellow I've uh, been chatting with lately on the uh, Geocache uh, chat channel. Um, and he was response to last week when there was a, uh, a another viewer who uh, asked why the Groundspeak had changed their prices in the UK and in uh, in Europe. Absolutely. Um, so uh, Phil is the uh, is the uh, cacher in question, and he pointed us to a. Uh, a forum uh, thread on the Groundspeak uh, geocaching forum, um, and in that forum had an explanation from Mountain Bike, who's one of the, uh, I believe he's a lackey at Groundspeak, um, mm -hmm. and the he the res the response is that the new pricing eliminates bank fees for geocachers outside of the U.S. as you are now able to pay in your local currency, and do not have to pay a transaction fee. More importantly, VAT or value added taxes is now included in the price. Um, so there's still a firestorm of discussion as to if the transaction fees in the VAT are set right or if it's still a money grab on the part of Groundspeak, um, as the fees and conversion rates uh, don't seem to add up. Um, but that is the um, the official response from Groundspeak. So there you go. Okay. Well, thank you so much for Engfeld for uh, sending that in to us. Uh, we're going to have a link to that uh, forum. Uh, discussion on our show notes so that if you want to go and uh, check that out as well and uh, that'll be out on my blog uh, tomorrow matter of fact so you'll be able to get uh, get a hold of that information straight out all right fantastic let's move on All right, tonight's episode is brought to you in part by cash-advance.com for all your geocaching needs. Cash-advance.com, go find it. And now Cash Advance would like to offer a $5 off coupon, promo code CA-snippet, to our listeners. This is good on all orders over $25. And also by coinsandpins.com, the best place to get custom coins, geocoins, lapel pins, and patches made. coinsandpins.com. If you act now and use the coupon code of hardhat, you'll receive a savings of 10% off your purchase, one use per customer. And as an FYI for our listeners, you can sign up for the newsletter to get notified of when new coins and patches are available for sale. And also by... RHpromos.com for personalized and trackable shirts, hats, decals, and more. Go to www.rhpromos.com. And right now, if you use the promo code of SNIPPET to receive 10% off your online order. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to put right on here a uh, good reason and something for you to try using here. Available to all of our users are the GeoSnippets Reboot Podcast trackable shirts. Fans can create their own GeoSnippets trackable sweatshirts and T-shirts. You have a huge selection of colors and sizes to choose from, plus you can customize your shirt with your name and make them trackable. Click the, on the link on the right side of our live viewer and or go to www.rhpromos.com and not only will you get a great shirt but also help out our show as well. And we thank you all the Geo Snippet viewers out there that are getting these shirts. We greatly appreciate that because it does. It helps out the show and uh, keeps the lights on, literally. So thank you so much. Well, um, ah. We are very thankful to all of our sponsors, and if you want to see more of their products, be sure to go to our GeoSnippets websites and simply click their logos. Not only do you get great deals, but it helps out our program as well. Absolutely. Yeah, Yep, yep, yep. I'll tell you what, the more that I'm down south here in Raleigh, the more I like that kind of music. Please forgive me. Anyways, we'll go from there. Hey, guys, thank you so much. All right, I'll tell you what, the chat room, holy smokes, is smoking. Uh, Joshua, I don't want to say this to, to get your nerves up or anything, dude, but we have a record crowd right now in the Ooh. chat room. This is the largest crowd I think I have ever seen out of the... We've been doing this show for uh, since January. Uh, we are on show episode 31, and we have a smoking chat room right now. And in fact, it's very difficult for us to keep up, folks. So we're going to try our best. People are asking questions already. They want to talk to you about... Guys, be patient with us. We're going to do this. And uh, thank you so much. Holy smokes. So... We have with us tonight the one, the only, the geocaching vlogger, Joshua Johnson, a.k.a. Mayberry Man. I'll tell you what, Josh, <laughs> wow. You know, I we actually started 
uh, geocaching about the same time back in 2008, if I remember mm -hmm. right. Yep. And uh, I think we kind of went different ways when it came to doing stuff on YouTube. But before we start getting into all this stuff, why don't, why don't you talk to the nice people and tell them about yourself? Yeah. Well, my name is Joshua Johnson. I live in Minnesota, the Twin Cities area, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, I'm married. I've been married for 15 years. I, I'm we're celebrating our wedding anniversary um, next month. I have three kids. Um, if you watch my YouTube videos, you've seen them. It's the Reister Bunny, MN Dove, and Woody Jr. Um, I've been geocaching for again five years since 2008. Um, been geocache vlogging uh, for almost three years in in uh, February, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it, it's really uh, to make it short. It's really just kind of added to my geocaching hobby slash obsession yes, yes. slash addiction. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, we love it. It's it's enhanced uh, my life, and it's been an incredible hobby. Well, you say you're from from Minnesota, correctly? Yep, that's right. That's awesome. Now, have you seen the uh, biggest ball of twine? I have seen the biggest ball of twine in Minnesota. Excellent. And, and uh, I, I knew about it because of the Weird Al song. Oh, absolutely. I've been saying that all week, actually. So. <laughs> Oh man, that's that's cool. So so tell us about your your geocaching profile. What what was the type of things that got you involved in geocaching in the first place? Well, I had <clears throat> I had a teacher friend that had done it um, before, and so I kind of heard about it in passing. And then I had a coworker that talked about going out geocaching. So I was always just curious and interested about it. And so for Father's Day in 2008, I just decided to just bite the bullet, got on Amazon, got me a E-Trex, um, <laughs> the ye little yellow E-Trex. Little Vista or the other that, one? Yeah, uh, Venture, I think it was called. Yeah. And, uh, and then I just, I just went out to find my first geocache, and as soon as I found it, I was hooked. And actually, uh, the very first day I went geocaching, I was so enthralled with the GPS and trying to figure out how it worked because um, there is a little bit of a learning cur curve that I actually rear-ended another car, oh, no. and that was that that was uh, that was my big welcome into the geocaching world, and and um, surprised surprised that I still went after that because um, didn't c cause a lot of damage, but was not a great start. Keep your eyes on the road, people. Focus geocaching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, just out of curiosity, now you, you started going into geocaching, and it sounds like similar paths that, that that I've gone through as well with this. What got you hooked into starting up the vlogging? Well, it's very interesting because um, I, I kind of happened upon it, and it was almost kind of an accident. Um, I was watching a lot of YouTube. I had some friends that I knew in person and friends I didn't know in person. Well, they weren't friends that I didn't know in person, but they were YouTubers that I noticed they were they were making vlogs, daily logs of their life. Like they would post a video every single day of their really? life. They, it's like they almost had like a, uh, their own reality TV show of their life. They documented it and they posted it on YouTube for the world to see. And to be honest with you, a lot of those those that I watched, they were kind of uh, regular you, you life. <laughs> yeah, regular life. Um, you know, they kind of sometimes mundane, like here's what I had for breakfast and now I'm going to work and now we're going shopping. And I watched that and I was like, you know what? Geocaching is really interesting. Oh, yeah. And wouldn't it be cool if I would document my geocaching adventures uh, with the world. So I got myself a little flip camera on Craigslist mm -hmm. and um, I actually met some guy in a parking lot, got it, and, and there happened to be a geocache. It was a light pole cache, of all things. <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a good light pole cache. You can go back to my first video. It was actually a good one. And, and then I... I I turned the camera on myself and I said, "Hey, I'm just going to, you know, try recording this. I don't know how it's going to come out, but why don't you come along with me?" So I, I did it. The video was awful. You can go back and look at it. Um my, my I was really close to the to the screen. It was a it was an awful video, 
but it was interesting because on because of YouTube and the social social nature of it, I started getting some good feedback about it, and they enjoyed it. And and like you said, you said in the pre-show, um, people enjoyed coming along with geocaching. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is you know especially the summer, a lot of teenagers are watching watching my videos because they want to go geocaching. But you know what? Thirteen-year-olds don't have cars, right. you know. So, so it's interesting that you know whatever it may be, for some reason they like coming along with us and, and getting to know us, and that's part of it. The part of it, they learn our personalities, and and I don't know. It's just it's just been a really amazing kind of fun thing to to kind of bring people along with us, and yeah. it's kind of changed a little bit the way I've geocached too, actually. Really? How so? Well. If I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna video something, a video of my geocaching adventure, I wanna, I wanna make sure it's worth, you know, I'm worth following along. So, so I, I always try to find um, an interesting angle to to what's happening, not just like, I mean, there there's oodles of geocaching videos out there on YouTube, and uh, some of them are just like, oh, you know, they don't point the camera at themselves, you know, they point it forward, and they're just like, oh, there's the geocache, we found it, and I'm kind of like, well, what what is it about it? about this adventure that is unique that is unlike others. So sometimes it's the people I bring along, sometimes right. it's my, my kids or or if I bring a coworker along like you've been bringing Amy along and oh, yeah, yeah. And, and and by the way Andrew the fact that you uh, went geocaching on your wedding day with your new bride <laughs> was very impressive. We had to just just for principle alone. Oh my gosh, that was that was awesome. Um <laughs> But whenever we, whenever I'm geocaching, at least when I turn the camera to myself or video the geocache, I always am in the back of my mind. I'm thinking, okay, what's what's the story? What what's the story gonna? Not not that we're fabricating anything. Everything right. we're seeing is real. But how am I going to edit this to make it interesting and and kind of uh, a little different than just like your run of the mill geocaching trip? Does that makes sense. Oh, this absolutely. Up, uh, uh, a listener question from the chat room at Quads in the Mud. He was asking, do you plan the videos? How much planning do you put ahead of time, or do you kind of do all your uh, um, planning that you were talking about just off the cuff in the field? Yeah, everything, pretty much everything you've seen is off the cuff. Now, I do kind of plan the caches that I go to. So um, so if the story for that particular video is, is um, hey, I'm, I know I'm going to go to a great cache. Um, so that that becomes the story for that for that video, but for the most part, um, it is off the cuff. But the, but there is a little bit of pre-planning. So for example, if there's a great geocache and it's 30 miles away, um, I will contact the cache owner ahead of time and say, hey, I would really like um, to to take video of your geocache and post it on YouTube. Uh, would would you would it be okay if I published it? And and if they say no, which sometimes they do say no, more often than not they say yes. Um, I might I might not make the trip there just because I know I'm not going to get video, um, or or I will go and I'll I'll take video and and uh, and just not publish it. But mm -hmm. but if I'm going to a great cache, I, I, it's helpful for me to know that I'm going to be able to share it if that makes sense. Because I really want to be respectful of the geocaching community and ask permission. Yeah, one of the other uh, watchers in the chat room uh, asked as well, what catches your eye? What 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 sparks uh, the idea that you want to even go to a particular geocache? Favorite points. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> Favorite points. That was probably one of the best ideas that geocaching.com came up with. Absolutely. Um, it, or, um, or in our area, we have uh, the Minnesota uh, Cache of the Month. So that that's it. Um, sometimes uh, geocachers will contact me and they've hidden a cache, and they want, they actually want me to come video it for them. They want to see people experience their geocache. And actually, my, my friend, uh, the GC Doc, who is also mm -hmm. on U YouTube, um, he hit a great Clue cache based on the game of Clue, and he actually came along with us. He filmed us finding his cache. Awesome. Um, you know, so, um, so yeah, that, you know, um, I think, I, I, can't, I, I, I forgot your question now, but... Um, no, but I mean, as far as what catches your eye, uh, sometimes oh, yeah. the favorite points, uh, yeah. name of it, that type of thing. Yep, yep, or or an event. You know, sometimes the the videos are not about a geocache at all, but it's about the people. Um, you know, so even even if I if I uh, take video of a cache that might be even a lamp post skirt or something like that, then uh, then 
my attention goes to the people and how are these people unique and what's this person's story or or, or you know videos that are really popular are people that find their very first geocache yes. and just seeing just seeing that on their face you know like oh my gosh I can't believe I, yeah. this is here and we found it you know it, it it's just priceless uh, so I have probably a, a dozen videos of me taking people geocaching for the first time. That's and awesome. and that really catches my eye and, and just the the emotion of it and, and again telling a good story um, that that's what catches my eye yeah the uh, one of the things I love seeing is uh, kids when they open up that ammo box and they see that swag and their eyes get big <laughs> and oh that's just that's that's it's it's good in two aspects one it's just genuinely fun and it's honest to see that type of thing and two visually it's really cool yes. to see that type of stuff and that's one of the things that I noticed about a lot of your vlogs that you have you are very colorful you are very creative you're very expressive with everything mm -hmm. and that is great for people to watch stuff because it is out of the norm from a lot of the different geo caching stuff that, uh, that you see that people do. It's a very creative side. Now, do you have anything that you attribute to why why you, you, you've got that creative gene going, and how did you actually get to that point? Um, well, I get that comment a lot. Like They say, Josh, you are so excited about geocaching. Oh, yeah. And it's genuine. It's true. I mean, geocaching is a passion of mine, much like you and, and, and many of the listeners here. And you know what? It's like I get excited about things that that I enjoy and I love. Um, so the the excitement there is is very real. And um, and but uh, at the other part of it is that I'm running through my head. You know, sometimes you don't always. Sometimes I don't always feel like taking video. You know what yeah. I mean? And so then I have to realize that within myself and say, you know what? I'm just gonna enjoy the cache. You know, enjoy geocaching and just kind of relax on this one. Do you get a chance um, to do that a lot where you just say, I'm just going geocaching? I do. I do, and it's actually refreshing. Um, <laughs> uh, and, or it's refreshing if I go with the, uh, I've gone with the GC doc, for example, and I'm like, you know what? Why don't you film this time? I'm just going to enjoy the geocaching. So I get to do that. Another thing I attribute it to is, is that I do have a, a theater background. I was a theater major in college, um, so I'm used, to, um, I, I'm used to some parts of performance. My job, um, I work with teenagers, and I go to uh, a little background about myself. I work, um, I go to schools, and I, I lead all-day retreats on different character values. So we do like uh, we do uh, retreats on respect, courage, and kindness. Uh, we help curb bullying in schools, and as, as a part of that, I'm I'm talking, I'm in front of kids, and I'm trying to keep their attention for the whole day, which is so, so easy. Yeah, yeah. So keeping people's attention. For two minutes in a video, uh, for me, is easy compared to a five and a half hour day. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so speaking of characters, um, oh, yes. uh, you have an alter ego called Mayberry Man. Um, yes. Can you tell us a bit about him and how he came along? <laughs> well, my, my geocaching name on, uh, on geocaching.com used to be Mayberry Man. My, uh, my dad and I, that this was our connection point, the old Andy Griffith show. And uh, and so I've I've been Mayberry Man ever since I got my Gmail account I guess <laughs> that that actual name, um, but from time to time, not very often, I break out my Barney Fife uniform, and and kind of um, I I at church I've done um, I've done sermons as Barney Fife. Nice. Um, <laughs> Do you have the bullet in your pocket during the sermon? Yes, of course. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> bullet maintenance is very important. Um, um. And most recently, I had the opportunity to go to Mount Airy, North Carolina, which I know you guys are very familiar yes. with. And uh, to that's Andy Griffith's hometown, and got to do some geocaching as Barney Fife. And there's actually a video if you're on YouTube, you can search geocaching in Mayberry. You'll see me on there, and uh, I do a little Barney Fife exploring the city geocaching. So. Pretty fun for me to. It's kind of two obscure things that I I melted melded together, <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of fun. A big highlight. Uh, something I wanted to check off my bucket list to get out there and enjoy um, Mayberry. And I actually got to go with my dad too, which was really oh, really me wow. meaningful for us. And uh, we had a great time in in North Carolina. So how how many how many looks did you get with uh, with Barney? Oh, a lot. <laughs> they thought they thought that I worked in the for the city because yeah, I you actually it, went to the museum too. 
I went to the museum. Um, I, I actually donated my Mayberry Man path tag to the museum. So it's actually in the museum, and that was my last path tag. I don't even have any myself. Uh-huh. But I thought, it, I thought if there's anywhere that my path tag should go, it should be in that museum. Uh, and then there's there's a mock-up um, jail jailhouse and and a, a fill-in station, and so yeah, I got a lot of looks. But if there's anywhere that you dress up like Barney and act like him, it's in Mayberry, right? Oh yeah, so, it gotta be. So, and I'm and I'm used to people staring at me doing the turning the camera on myself, <laughs> filming myself. So um, I'm just yeah. used, I'm used to stares. Been uh, there, done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you you just have to uh, stop caring. And just yeah. realize, hey, this is, uh, hey, I'm talking to a thousand people right now, and and everything around me is, you know, superficial compared to the, that. The world is your your playing board, and and that's what you've got to do. And, and yep. yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. That is so cool. And yeah, for the people that don't realize, uh, if you actually go to Mount Airy, there is uh, Pilot Mountain. So mm-hmm. uh, nearby is the the fictional area where Mayberry is. And so when you actually watch the Andy Griffith show, if you always hear Andy saying, "Well, I'm going to to uh, Mount Pilot." That's Pilot Mountain in reference. Yep. So just yep. so that, you know, that's so cool, though. Fantastic. Yeah. So, um, what type of things, as far as what what would be a typical day for you, as far as uh, you want to go out, you want to get some geocaching in, you want to get some filming done? Uh, what kind of what kind of planning do you do, and what would a typical day be for shooting? Boy, it, it's really there's really not much to it. Um, I don't have I don't have a huge camera that I bring along with me, and we can talk about equipment a little bit later. But sure. I just I just go out like a like anybody would just go out geocaching, and I just bring the camera along with me. Sometimes I get some awesome stuff, and sometimes I don't. There's not a whole lot of planning beyond what you would normally plan for. Um, for a typical geocaching trip, and actually, probably I don't plan very well because anybody that watches my videos, the running joke is I, I rarely have a pen with me, um, and that actually is kind of funny because then I'm then that adds to the part of the video. Actually, I was in a quick story. I was in Seattle at a, at a popular cache. A guy walked by and he goes, "I bet you're geocaching." I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh, this one, this one's a good one." I was like, "Oh, really? Why don't you help me find it?" And, and if you don't mind, I, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna film. And so, are you okay with being on YouTube? Uh, people get all like big. Oh yeah, oh, yeah I'll be on yeah. YouTube. That'd be great. So we're doing it. we we find the cache. He helps me find it, and I I turn to him and I go, "You know what? I don't have a pen." And he's like, "Quick!" And there he goes, "I'll run in. I'll run into that office building. And I'll get building. And I'll get one." It became, awesome. part of, it became part of the video. Um, so, um, actually, as far as preparation, I'm I'm not the most prepared geocacher, and maybe that ends that um, adds to maybe the humor, or maybe amuses people, or or probably better yet, people can just relate to exactly. being unprepared. <laughs> exactly, that's um, awesome. What what kind of camera, just out of curiosity, do you normally use for something like that? Well, for years, I was just using the Flip Mino camera. So you know, it's like that big. Mm-hmm. Turned it to myself. Um, had limitations because uh, the the lens uh, lens wasn't wide, so I I added a little that little clip on lens that's actually magnetic, um, but that wore out. And and then I I was using my iPhone five. So if I'm if I'm not prepared and I don't have my camera with me, which sometimes happens, I just use the iPhone five, which actually uses is pretty good, although it is a little shaky. Um, but the last two weeks, uh, two weeks ago, I got a new camera. I got a Canon. Uh, PowerShot Elf 330 HS. Okay. That's a, that's a mouthful. Uh, and the reason I selected it is because I did some research on the kind of camera a lot of vloggers were using. Uh, so it, w- it was a higher quality vlogging camera, and the best thing about it was that wide-angle lens. So if you look at my videos from the last two weeks, you'll see you'll see a full a full picture. You'll not only see my head, but you'll see all the scenery behind me, and I don't even have to hold it out very far. And then I'll use like a little, a little one of those little tiny seven-inch or six-inch tripods uh, to hold on to it to keep it steady, so I'm not going, you know, not doing this. And the the worst thing, I, you know, nobody wants to watch shaky, yes, you know, shaky video. But uh, unfortunately, the nature of of vlog editing, um, it, it just happens because people are filming themselves. But I I've gotten over the years, I've gotten pretty good at filming myself. It kind of it sounds kind of egotistical, doesn't it? But, uh, you know, uh, just you know, that's how it is with the biz. That's just <laughs> how it is. We love us. We love us. What can we say? <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
so yeah, it actually holds pretty steady. Actually, and also that Elf camera that I just got has amazing uh, image stabilization, in it, which you know a lot of cameras say they do, and then you're like, eh, I don't really notice it. But the, yeah. this one has been really, I've been really impressed with it. That is awesome. So after you're after you're done having your day, what uh, what's post production like? Um, very simple. You know the vlog style. If you watch vlogs on YouTube and not necessarily. Um, not geocaching vlogs, for example. Um, a lot of the editing is kind of guerrilla style, you know. So it's not. I don't have. Uh, I could invest in some really amazing uh, video editing software, Adobe Premiere or whatever. But really, I've been just. I've been using for the past three years. Three years, um, iMovie on really? my Mac. And and awesome. it's surprising. It's surprising what you can do. You can make it look pretty good. I think people sometimes with iMovie make the mistake of using every single little transition and every little, and then people are like, oh, that person's using iMovie. So yeah. I like to use iMovie and, and kind of hide the fact that I use iMovie. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, by, not, by not using all the bells and whistles. And, and because it's a guerrilla style of editing and it's not super, you know, super high production, um, I, can, I can whip out those videos pretty, qu- pretty quick. I think it adds um, to the charm, too. Oh yeah. 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 And it well, makes it feel personal. Yeah, everybody has their own style on how they they want to do things and they get noted for that. And yeah. uh, after people start getting used to it and you don't do it, you you're, you're going to get some pushback on it because that's what they that's what they expect. That's really uh, cool. So we have Go a couple of uh, questions from the uh, chat room. Please do. Um, one is from Lenomo and he asks, "Will Dove be doing his own vlog?" <laughs> I'm not sure who Dove is, but well, Dove, Dove is my middle child, okay. and what happened, I got that new camera uh, two weeks ago, and so there's video out there of him in the background with my old camera uh, yes. being, like, being like Dad, turning it to himself, saying, hey, guys, you know, uh, I guess imitation's the best compliment, and uh, oh, yeah. the, the middle boy wants to be like Dad. So um, there are no plans for Dove to have his <laughs> own channel. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? It, if I, he was putting out videos, what that means is a lot more work for Dad, yes. helping him edit them and stuff. But who knows? Um, maybe that's a future project that, that we can work on together. But no right. plans for it. One more question from Quads in the Mud. Um, what is behind the Vlogger banner behind you? What is behind, oh, what is behind it? <laughs> that you What's have behind a great banner? backdrop, dude. Oh, uh, yes. I'm just saying. Yeah, I just got that for the block party. I, I felt like I had to use it again. Um, there, are, uh, quads in the mud. There are books back there. Lots of books. Excellent. And and, and actually, the thing holding it up is a treadmill. So. <laughs> yes, that's the, that's the beauty and the science and the magic. Yeah, well, that's why people buy treadmills is to hang things off of, right? Yeah, right. Not to use them. Um, so, <laughs> next question from uh, myself is: What are some of your favorite episodes and why? Oh boy. Um, I'd say one of my favorites, usually our videos are three to five minutes long, but we went to MOGA this year um, in Illinois. And if you don't know what MOGA is, it's a mega event. It travels around. It's the Midwest Open Geocaching Adventure. And the thing that's special about it is that they have geocaching competitions there. It's like full-out races. Basically, you get two and a half hours to go and find as many geocaches as you can and get back. Um, so I've been competing in that over the past several years, but this year um, the team that the team that I, I, I usually competed with couldn't go. We were actually defending the championship, and so we couldn't defend it. We were all just I was disappointed, and so I made it a a father daughter trip, and so my my daughter Reese here. Hold on, here she is. Yes, yes, hey, please, please. Hi. Hi. She's the Reesker bunny. Uh, decided to go down together and uh, and compete in MOGA together, and we got we got second place in thirty and the thirty and under division. She right. brought she brought my age down, which is good because I'm over thirty. Awesome. <laughs> um, and but the thing that was great about that video is that it, we made it a twenty minute kind of a twenty minute short film on our road trip together. So what it captured, what I love that it captures about it is the time that I'll cherish with her from years to come and now I'll be able to look back on it uh, on YouTube for years to come when she's old and she's like, me and my dad did these weird things where we would go geocaching we raced or whatever. 
Um, but I'll be able to look back on that. And there's some great hides on that. Uh, we traveled through Iowa. We went to the American Pickers store, if you're familiar with American Pickers. Yes. Um, there's a geocache there, so that's in there. Um, there's We went to the future birthplace of Captain James T. Kirk, oh, which yeah. is also in Iowa, which was a great multi. And then it shows a little bit of the event, too. So I really like that video. Um, what other videos do I like really well? Um, you're gonna I, for those of you who watched our vlogs. You're really gonna enjoy the block party videos hey. coming up. Those are gonna be good. You know, speaking of which, why don't we uh, why don't we uh, switch hats here real quick, Josh? Since okay. you've already gone to the block party and uh, have experienced all this fun, why don't you put your roving reporter hat on for us and uh, just give us a nice little rundown of uh, some of the stuff that you saw while you were there. Well, uh, the block party was fabulous. Uh, it was my first time um, going to the block party, second time at the Groundspeak headquarters. Um, it was the biggest ever. So uh, last I heard, there were roughly 3,000 geocachers descending on the Fremont district. Um, so that was awesome. Um, some amazing things that were happening were um, geocaching.com released kind of a new idea called lab caches that were really interesting, and, and I think overall, for those that attended the event, were really well received. I could talk about that more if you're interested. Absolutely. Um, what else? It was the first ever, There was in the evening, there was the first ever geocaching, international geocaching film festival, which was just an awesome way to cap, cap the event. Um, and so they had a gigantic movie-type screen, kind of a drive-in, movie theater screen and they showed 16 great geocaching videos from all over the world on there so that was just a nice touch the weather was beautiful um, I believe they they rehid a lot of the Fremont neighborhood caches so those that had been to it before um, got new kind of got new hides to look at in addition to the lab caches that were also in the neighborhood sure. um, overall it was just a fabulous event and I'm just the thing I was impressed with the most was um, the lackeys, um, uh, the lackeys at Groundspeak. Uh, you couldn't ask for a more hospitable group. They, I genuinely felt like they were really glad that the geocaching community was there. And for them, it wasn't just a job, but it was just, it was really, it was a genuine, heartfelt welcome. Come to Seattle, come, come, and let's gather together. And they were just so hospitable, hospitable to I think all the geocachers there, but in particular myself. So I was just really thankful for that. That's awesome. Now, we have to mention this because if you don't, we're going to. Okay. So the, when it comes to the film festival, yes. how would you do? Okay, so, um, so ge you take geocaching and you take making videos. And so when I heard about that, I'm like, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do? we got to submit a video. So we submitted a video. We waited a month to find out. Um, how it did. They contacted us. They said we were finalists, which means that they were going to show it on the big screen, which we were very excited. And, and uh, <laughs> we were just thinking, it's just an honor to be nominated. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I was like, okay, this, this clinched it. I got to get there because I want to watch our video on the big screen. Um, so we submitted a video. Um, they showed 16, all 16 of them. My video was the 15th one, which I was just having a heart attack. I was like, is mine going to be the next one to play? Uh, they played it. It was wonderful, great. Um, short story, uh, long story short, uh, we got the most creative slash experimental uh, video award, and then we also got the audience award, which was voted on by the participants at Groundspeak. So we got the the honor of, of having the favorite video of the film festival, oh, which man. is just just really cool, and it wasn't just me, by the way. The GC Doc and I collaborated together on that video, and um, it's actually going to be published on YouTube either late tonight or early morning tomorrow. So oh, the kudos world, to so you everybody, can, everybody can see it. Thank you. And it was just really, it was really affirming. Um, oh man, congratulations! That is so cool, and I'll tell you yeah. what, I would be, I would be busting loose telling everybody I could <laughs> tell for that. So I am so glad you could do it on this show. That's so great. Yeah, yeah, awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Dave, I think we got a couple uh, other things uh, real quick before we let uh, Josh go. We could talk all night, and that's the kicker. We could talk all night. We could talk for hours. I uh, have a couple more um, uh, user questions from the chat channel, which is absolutely hopping tonight. So thanks, oh, everyone, yeah. in there. Uh, first question is from UrbanDude23, who asks, where would you geocache anywhere in the world? Where's your dream location? I want to go to Germany. 
because those people nice love choice. they love geocaching. I ran it. I had dinner with some some German geocachers, and I'm like, "What is it? Like, why are you guys so high on geocaching?" What? And and it was just like their eyes just lit up, and they were so excited. I want to be around people that are that passionate about geocaching. That and they were talking about some of the crazy events they did. I mean, that the German community of geocaching. I mean, they're just that's where I'd want to go. If you I want to go where to people. Some. If you ever want to see something cool, take a look at the geocaching.com map of Germany. There oh, yeah. are no hiding spots. No, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the sausage. Just. <laughs> uh, the last question is from a geocacher. Um, I think it's Streisa. Yeah, I think um, he's one of the uh, the Dirtbag Geocaching Society. Oh, gentlemen. is he? Excellent. Yeah. Um, and he asked, do you listen to any? Do you listen to any geocaching podcasts? And if so, which ones? Are you asking me? I am asking you. I I not only listen but I watch the Geo Snippets reboot podcast. Woo! Fine I get a choice, chance. my friend. A yes. fine choice. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and of course I listen to to Podcaster. Like yeah, we're good friends so with Sunny many, and Sandy. So many the... people. And actually, uh, spoiler alert. Are you ready? Uh -huh. Sunny and Sandy Podcaster make a cameo appearance in my uh, film festival video. Really? Ooh. I am dying to see this now. This is great. Ooh. Teaser. <laughs> sorry for the sorry for the self promotion, but I'm No, hey, that's that. what this is all about, man. <laughs> this is all about that. Well, Joshua, I tell you what, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Like I said, we could talk all night and and probably would, but uh, we got, we're gonna let you go. Uh, is there anything else? Well, two things. Uh, one, is there anything else that you would like to, uh, to say to all your fans and all the viewers out there about uh, uh, the geocaching vlogger? And then let us know how to get in touch with you. Um, I just want to thank everybody that's just so kind um, on YouTube and commenting on all our videos. Um, YouTube is more than just cat videos. It's about building relationships. And A bit. the cool thing is like the GC Doc, for example, that uh, that I, I do geocaching with all the time, and now we're like best of friends. We've we found each other on YouTube, and we live a mile from our from each other. That's crazy, and so it just shows the power of this community and the power of the geocaching community. So that's awesome. Um, you can contact me and by just going to www.geocachingvlogger.com. That goes directly to my YouTube channel. And that's where I want to point people. So, um, so go there, check it out, uh, say hi, say that you you heard me on this podcast, and uh, I'll be sure to say hi back. Awesome. Thanks, well, you can go ahead. I said thank you. Thanks for having oh, me on. Oh man, you are more than welcome. Hopefully, we'll have you on not too distant future as well. Yeah, you can you can see Joshua on uh, Facebook, on Google Plus, on just about everything of the social networks, and I think on YouTube too, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. So. I'm on there somewhere. Somewhere on there, he's on there. So, <laughs> no, Joshua, I'll tell you what, man, you you spread the word of geocaching like nobody else, and and just kudos and keep doing what you're doing because the people obviously love it. We love watching it as well, and thank you again so much for being on the show. Thanks, Andy. Oh, no problem, man. All right, uh, Josh, if you want to stick around, you can. Uh, we're going to continue on with the show. If not, feel free to, to go do stuff because you got kids, man. I know how that goes. <laughs> so that's how that is. All right. Uh, thank you again, uh, Joshua Johnson, a.k.a. the Geocaching Vlogger. Let's move on. Your support helps keep all of the GeoSnippets reboot shows running along. Please consider making a PayPal donation through the link on our website to support our efforts and your ongoing entertainment. From all of us at GeoSnippets, we thank you. And we do mean thank you. All right, I'll tell you what, boy, that was a lot of talking with people. That was so great having Joshua on. That was just fantastic. And we hope you enjoyed uh, enjoying the show with Joshua. And if you're new to the show, we hope that you come back again and see more of the Geosnippets Reboot podcast as well. Welcome and thank you for being here. All right, time now for one of my favorite parts of the show, the Geosnippets Geocaching Cash Dash. So let me explain what that is. We have, in the geocaching world, some of the absolute best companies that deal with 
geocaching. And what they do is they uh, give to us uh, pri uh, different types of products that they provide for their particular company. And in return, we do a blurb about their company and the products themselves. And then we take those products and give them to you as prizes each and every week. And so, Dave, why don't we talk about uh, episode 30 and the uh, question for last week. Excellent. Uh, first, the prize, which was donated by GXProxy.com, which is a green bison tube and a CoinsAndPins.com state travel tag. All right, I'm going to show that uh, real quick for the fine viewers here. So we got a nice... Uh Bison tube and the state. Dave actually made me make sure what we went was Oregon. Oregon, so yes. Oregon, yeah. The birthplace of geocaching. You know how that goes. Tomato, tomato. That's what we've got. Why don't we see about the question? All right. The question was: In the geocaching.com logo, what symbol is in the bottom right square? And the answer is a flag or pennant. So let's oh. see who won. All right, we again had another record amount of people putting in their entries, and we'll talk about how you get into that in a minute, but let's how, show you how we pick our winner. Uh, basically what happens is, is for a person to qualify, they need to send an email to us, and again, we'll show you how to do that in a few minutes, uh, and then we take uh, all the correct answers and total up uh, a list of them, and then I have a random number generator here, and I'm going to push the button, and uh, that's going to give me what I want. And uh, so that's going to give me a number that we are going to choose from. Then we have a list of all the correct answers that are in here up to that number that we just did. Dave is going to take his magic Canadian coin and he's going to flip it. And we're going to add just a little bit more suspense and intrigue. And if he flips heads... We're going to go from the top of the list down to that number. If he does tails, we go from the bottom of the list up to that number. Let's see what we get. Oh, I flipped it before the show, and it came up heads. Uh, so we're going from the uh, sort of the top down. All right. Here we go. I've got it right here. And like I said, thank you again for everybody that put in their, uh, uh, their votes. We had a record amount. Let me see if I've got here what we have. Okay. Here we go. Uh, has the correct answer. And the winner is, and I'm going to mark this so that I do not forget, uh, the winner is Randy Razo, R-A-Z-O, Randy Razo, who lives in Las Vegas, Nevada. Fantastic. And congratulations for winning episode 30. Way to go. Congratulations, Randy. All right. So you're going to say to yourself, well, that is really cool. I want to get on this. They're giving away great prizes. How do I do this? Well, it's really, really simple. To be eligible to win a prize from the Cash Stash, all you have to do is send in your correct answer. Now, for this episode coming in, it has to be in by 12 noon uh, Wednesday, uh, Eastern Time, which would be August 28th. Next Wednesday at 12 noon, you got to get your correct answer in. And you have to send it to, and I'm going to put this up on the bottom third, here for the people watching the video, you send it to GS Reboot. That's G S R E B O O T at gmail.com. G S Reboot at gmail.com. And in the subject line, if you'd be so kind as to put Q1 for question one. And for this week's episode, you want to put episode 31. Very important. Q1, episode 31. And send in your answer to the question we are about to give. Now, sometimes. Sometimes, for our live viewer, we give a second prize right here, right now, like tonight. So, yes, Yay. after we do question one, we're going to do question two. So, folks, stay, uh, stay tuned. You're going to be having a chance of winning some really, really cool prizes. But let's do question for episode 31. Dave, take it away. First is the prize, which uh, was donated by CashAdvance.com, which is a window auto travel bug, uh, which is a, is that a, that's a uh, window cling? Uh, this one's a window cling. A window cling for your car that's trackable, and yep. it comes with a, uh, looks like a copy travel tech. Yes, it uh, does. So the question is, what TV show inspired the nickname Mayberry Man? I'll mm -hmm. read that again. What TV show inspired the Mayberry Man. Uh, so send your answers in to gsreboot at gmail.com, subject Q1, episode 31, and have those in by uh, noon Eastern time on uh, Wednesday, August the 28th. 
All right, all right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my bottom third for the people in the live, watching the live feed in the live chat room. This is how you're going to want to do this tonight, folks, and especially to the people that are new to this. Get your computers ready. Uh, what you're going to want to do is send an email. And you're going to want to send an email to gsreboot at gmail.com, just like you see on the screen. In the subject line, and this is very important, make sure you put question two, episode 31. That way we make sure that your question that you're about to answer goes into the right feed for us so that we can include you as a possible winner. Now, the way this works is uh, we're going to ask the question. We're going to say go first person in that has the correct answer wins this. Alright, now we've got two things here. This I want in my pack. I want one of these. This is really great. Uh, this comes from gxproxy.com. This is a tick ring. And for everybody that's gone geocaching and knows what ticks are, this is an amazing device. And basically what happens is when one of those little blood suckers hooks into you, this is a very easy way of removing them from your skin. And, uh, and it's, uh, this, this should be a must in every geocacher's backpack as far as I'm concerned. We also are giving away a blue bison tube. So these are the two items of which that we are going to be giving away tonight. Dave, take her from there. All right, the question is, warm up your Googles, folks. Warm up your Googles. Uh, what actor played Deputy Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show? Uh, I'll repeat that again. What actor played Deputy Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show? So send that in as quick as you can to gsreboot at gmail.com with the subject Q2, and the first person in will win that prize right now. All right, guys, go, go, go. Get it in, gsreboot at gmail.com, question two. All right, Dave. Why don't we uh, wrap this puppy up, and uh, we'll see if we got ourselves a winner. All right, Dave, why don't you go ahead and close out the show? Ah, uh, yes, we changed things up today. All right, uh, closing out the show, and thank yous. Um, so we'd like to thank our sponsor, cash-advance.com, coinsandpins.com, and rhpromos.com. Thanks to Andy Headhart hat smith and also a special thanks to uh, the geocaching blogger, Joshua. Um, it was a great show. And thanks to everybody in the chat room. It has been a record chat. It's, we count, um, like, slamming chat room tonight. Uh, so thanks for that. Uh, please keep those comments coming in and see you next time and keep your stick on the ice. Yeah, we uh, we definitely want to keep a uh, special thanks to Mr. Dave DeBear for being a co-host and one heck of a fine individual all the way around. Um, Again, we want to do an extra, extra special thank you to Joshua Johnson uh, for being a guest tonight. Thank you so much, Josh. We do appreciate it. Now, next week's show uh, is going to be one that actually I, I enjoy talking about because it really brings out a lot of things about geocaching. We don't try to do it as a negative thing. We try to do it as ways of coming up with uh, solutions and identifying issues with geocaching. So next week, we are going to be talking about geocaching pet peeves. So what we need from you to do is to send to us either emails through gsreboot at gmail.com uh, about your pet peeve. What, what, what irks you about geocaching? What's things that you would like to see better? That type of thing. What are some of the things that drive you crazy about geocaching? Let us know. And more importantly, also click our, our send uh, voicemail tab or send us a voicemail uh, through our standard phone line. Send us in what also are your pet peeves that way through your voice so that we can also include those in on the show. We would greatly, greatly appreciate it. All right, before we actually close out, let's see if we got ourselves a winner. All right, let's check that email. All right. Oh, wow. Holy smokes. All right. I am going to go with the... Uh... <laughs> All right. Let me see if this actually is correct. Uh... <laughs> Somebody just sent me a picture of their cat on their laptop. Okay, that's not it. Uh, okay. We have a winner, Yay. and the winner is... Uh, M3A9, a.k.a. Matt Hoover, 
M3 A9. Sorry, that's my dog in the background. <laughs> M3 A9. Matt Hoover from Martinsburg, Pennsylvania. You are the winner for the show's second prizes tonight. Congratulations, Matt. Congratulations. All right, so let's wrap this puppy up. Uh, we had a fantastic show. I mean, holy cow, I, this was absolutely the greatest, and uh, thank you all so, so very much for coming and joining with us. It was so much fun. Please, please come back again and, and join the fun each and every week. Uh, see you next week on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Geo Snippets Reboot Podcast. And as we say in the Geo Snippets Studios... See you out on the trails, folks. Bye-bye. Please be sure to join us each and every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time for another episode of the Geosnippets Reboot Podcast right here on the Geosnippets website at www.geosnippets.com. The video version of our show is available on YouTube, and the audio version is available on iTunes, Stitcher, Blueberry, the Tech Podcast Network, and many of your favorite podcatchers. We love hearing from our viewers and listeners, so please leave your feedback by emailing us at gsreboot at gmail.com, visit us through our social media sites, or contact us via our voice line at 919-341-9519, or use our new website, Send Voicemail tab. The Geo Snippets Reboot is a Head Hard Hat production and is produced by Dave DeBearmaker and Andy Smith. This show is copyrighted 2013 by Andrew T. Smith. All rights reserved. And clear. Clear. Wow, hokey smokes. What a great show, folks. Thank you so much for coming on by. We really, really had a great time with Joshua. And, uh, you know, this is this is just what makes fun doing stuff like that, to be able to bring on people and uh, talk about their passions uh, when it comes to geocaching. And Joshua, actually, you can see his passion every time you see one of his vlogs. So please be sure to make sure you hook into his circles and uh, check him out on YouTube because that is always a good time watching his, his vlogs. Uh, Dave, any final thoughts? Uh, no, it was a great show, and I finally had a chair dancer. To, well, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I always do a little dance when the uh, when the theme song comes on, and uh, Josh was dancing around with me, so <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, guys, we're uh, we're going to end the broadcast here. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, from the bottom of our heart, our numbers, uh, for the number of viewers that are, are increasing uh, exponentially, and we thank you because that all adds to the geocaching community uh, that we, we are all a part, and it would be nothing without you. So thank you for watching our video cast. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Thank you for talking with us through our social networks uh, because it is. It is quite a network that is just not like anything else on the planet. And uh, it's nothing without you guys. Thank you so much for being a part of it. All right, Dave, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Everybody in the chat room, holy smokes, that just was amazing. Thank you all so much. Have a great week. Uh, keep up with uh, our vlogs here with uh, Amy and myself. With uh, we still got nine more days to do for the 31 days of geocaching. Keep up with that as well. And if not, we will see you next week. Be safe out there, folks, and uh, see you on the trails, folks. See you guys. <laughs>